<laughs> Mod of Sonic 2 concludes here. And you know what else concludes? Me wearing this thing. Well, since I played Sonic 1 for the Game Gear after the Genesis 1, might as well do the same exact thing with Sonic 2 here. But I like the previous game which I played when I was younger on the Master System, I do not have experience with Sonic 2. I mean, yes, I own the box right over here, but I never owned the Game Gear and still don't. The only method I played this game was on Sonic Adventure DX on the GameCube, and I got annoyed just right at the end of the first level and I was completely done with the game. But it can't be that bad. I mean, look at the review scores over here. I mean, it got some decent scores, so maybe I just gave up too soon and missed all the best parts of this game. I don't know, and since it's still Sonic Month, even though I'm a few days late, let's give it another shot, so follow me, guys. Let's get one thing right off the bat. The most notable omission of this game is Tails. You cannot play as him because he's kidnapped by Bonic in the opening cinematic. And that's a major problem considering the fact he shows up on the freaking cover of the game. But quite frankly, that's the least of our problems. The game plays almost exactly like Sonic 1. You run, you spin and jump. But it feels a lot less precise. Jumping in general feels floaty, especially trying to adjust your direction after bouncing on a spring. Not to mention that if you jump forward, it feels like there is an invisible force that pushes our blue hero further than usual, making him unable to go back and control the direction. It's really hard in a review like this to explain jumping controls and physics, but just to give you an idea what I think about the controls of this game, let's contrast it with Sonic 4. Whereas Sonic 4, Sonic felt very stiff and heavy, in Sonic 2 for the Game Gear, Sonic feels rather flimsy and unbalanced as he can just fly away in the air like a feather in the wind. However, there are some things that this game does better than its predecessor. For one, if you get hit, you can actually reclaim some of your fallen rings. Granted, if you had a large amount before you get hit, you'd only drop a tiny fraction of it, but at least the game gives the players more chances to survive. Though it always baffled me how instead of having 100 rings once you collect one more from 99, the counter reverts back to zero causing it to be vulnerable again. Are those 8-bit systems incapable of adding the additional one right there? There's nothing much to say about the level themselves besides each one having its own gimmick. In fact, instead of having gimmicks, I would rather have one mechanic that should have been in this game, the Spin Dash! Breaking this wall would have been a lot easier if I had that. The next level is Sky High Zone, and the gimmick in that level is the glider. You know, the thing that's on the front of the cover of this game? And guess what? You'd barely even get to use it, so... <laughs> also, the controls themselves are very awkward where you have to use the left directional pad to ascend, and it doesn't really work properly. But not all gimmicks are bad, in fact, the water level, Aqua Lake, has the best one, surprisingly. You go inside a bubble, which is already a positive since you don't have to look for air since, well, you know, you're in a bubble. But you also have to control how fast your bubble rises, while making sure it doesn't touch anything because it can pop immediately. But after that, we get to a uh, green hill zone. Ugh, this race is a migraine. Okay, first of all, why call the level Green Hills? Why pluralize it? It's like calling a level Aquatic Ruin Zone, or Chemical Plants, or Metropolis Zone. Metropolis? Metropolis? Uh, Metropoli? That name in plural, why would you do that? And second of all, even a bigger problem, Green Hills? Why would you call it Green Hills if we had an original level that's called Green Hill in Sonic 1? In fact, this is Sonic 2, not Sonic 1. So you know what would be a better name for that level? Gee, let me think about it. Emerald Hill Zone! I mean, it's Sonic 2! I mean, the Game Gear version is a sister game to the Genesis 1. Might as well have one thing that's similar. But nope! Just make it more confusing! Thanks, Sega! And also, why is this level 4? I mean, it's much easier than the three levels preceding it. It's actually teeming with extra lives and- It's to do Sonic Warrior. No, no, I'm serious, just, just listen. Mom 
gimmick is the factory level. It is not bad. But Scrambled Egg Zone is. The whole level revolves around going to shoots that will suck you in, and you have to press the right directional button at the right time before a rather spiky encounter. This is rather annoying since it involves a lot of trial and error since your suction speed in those is way too fast. And more than often you have to memorize the patterns to know exactly what you did wrong. Oh, and also, those bombs from Starlight Zone from Sonic 1 are back here. Yay! There's also one annoying timing puzzle towards the end of the level. If you fail it, you fall down to a pit of spikes. And since there's no way for you to get out, you die and you have to go all the way back to the beginning. Oh, did I forget to mention there are no checkpoints in this game? Yeah, I'm gonna duck some points there too. It's even harder to coordinate the platform in the Game Gear version because of the screen cropping problem. And that's its biggest problem. You can't see what's in front of you. That wasn't an issue in Sonic 1 because players would rarely have to make risky jumps, except for the final emerald track. But here it's more of a theme since you always try to jump to a ledge that you cannot see and ends up falling on a spike pit and losing all your rings. But thanks to the Master System's resolution, you can see much more of the background so you can plan jumps accordingly, unlike the Game Gear version. It makes the Game Gear version especially frustrating in levels like Aqua Lake 2, in which you have to navigate in a bubble through spears and lobsters. It's passable in the Master System version, but in the Game Gear, since you cannot really plan your window of opportunities here, your limited visibility makes you hit those obstacles all the time. Also, because you can't change the direction of your fall when you get hit, what happens is that you cling to the wall and hit the lobster at the bottom, and if you have no rings, that's a one-way ticket at the beginning of the level. At the end of each third act, you get to face a boss, but like in the previous game, which is just Ekbonic in one of his machines, this time you face a robotic animal with a gimmick, which I'll give credit, at least it's something original, so one point for creativity, but according to what the manual says right over here, he has created six really nasty robots in order to get rid of Sonic once and for all. Six nasty robots, eh? <laughs> just watch this. Yeah, when you get the Flex Silver Sonic with a simple jump, you know, one of the hardest bosses in Sonic 2, there's a problem. I think you should reconsider what the definition of the word nasty means. But despite that, the first boss of this game is challenging for all the wrong reasons. In the Game Gear version, not only you can see where the bombs drop, but their bouncing trajectory changes at random, making this boss much more luck-based. Thankfully, the Master System version, you can see more of what's going on, pretty much eradicating any kind of frustration I had with the Game Gear version. Also, why is Ekbonic going kamikaze on his own machine? But before every boss encounter, you have to go through a gauntlet of obstacles in order to reach the boss at the very end. But just like in the previous game, you get zero rings to do it. So in other words, one hit, and you're done. Ah, oh, they do everything in their power to aggravate you. And granted, the bosses themselves are not hard, but even one mistake can cost an entire progression, which can be really annoying. Especially in one level in particular! Green Hills Act 3. It doesn't look bad from this gameplay footage, but just to give you an idea, this is how the whole level looks like. Nothing but springs and spikes. You get spikes! You get spikes! EVERYBODY GETS SPIKES! It looks easy to avoid, but if you play this level on a tiny Game Gear screen, you will offshoot jumps all the time. And even with the increased visibility of the Master System version, it's just impossible to judge where you're supposed to jump to, and you die over and over. Top it all off with the most annoying boss in the whole game that sends you all the way back when you fail, and you got a good excuse to go to your doctor to ask for an ibuprofen prescription. Thankfully, the screen crop issue doesn't apply to the Chaos Emerald hunt in this game. Like in Sonic 1, the emeralds are hidden throughout the second act of each of the levels. It's relatively easy as long as you stick to the higher path, except for Sky High Zone. 
The emerald is at the very top of the screen, and the only way to get it is to find springs hidden within clouds. If you miss a jump, prepare to sacrifice a life since getting back is at shore. If you do not get all the six emeralds by the end of Scrambled Egg Zone, the game ends and you get the bad ending. And I have to say it's pretty sad, especially since it's rather ambiguous since you have no idea what happened to Tails. Tails, no! However, collecting all the emeralds grants access to the final level, Crystal Egg, which is surprisingly rather plain despite the unique design. The final boss is probably one of the hardest final bosses in Sonic history, and thankfully in a good way since you have to coordinate being in the shoots for a specific amount of time without being electrocuted while finding the golden opportunity to attack a botnik at the right time. But when you do defeat Ekbonik for one final time, he decides to make a run for it to his teleporter, but he ends up switching places with Tails? Or does he become Tails? I mean, he does smile the screen rather maliciously, I think? Even Sonic is like shrugging like this, no idea of really what's going on. Graphically, the game looks very similar to its predecessor. Except maybe a little bit more slowdown this time around, especially in Aqua Lake Zone but it is at least serviceable and looks okay for the system. The music as well is serviceable. As much as I like the rendition of Tutu Sonic Warrior, the rest of the soundtrack is okay at best. But don't worry, the composers of this game will do a much better job when they move on to the Japanese version of Sonic CD. Now let's talk about the bonus stages. There are none. On the positive side, some of the levels and the bosses are pretty unique this time around. Considering how the bad ending of this game feels like, the Chaos Emerald Hunt feels more rewarding than ever. And I also have to give it points for having... On the negative side, don't play this on the Game Gear, the cropping is crap. Unfortunately, you can't see half the time where you're jumping to. The controls feel rather loose and floaty unlike previous Sonic games. It can be very punishingly cheap and difficult, especially in Scrambled Egg Zone, and the music, while not bad, feels rather uninspired. And overall, does Sonic 2 for the Game Gear hold up? It doesn't, because I can't hold it. Honestly, this game is not nearly as bad as I originally thought it would be, and granted there are some awful parts about it, like Green Hills Act 3 where you keep losing lives, and that annoying shoot segments in Scrambled Egg Zone, but besides that, it's actually kind of fun. For the Master System version, the Game Gear version, however, avoided like the plague. The reduced screen resolution doesn't make it fun because you can rarely tell how far you need to jump, and you can't really measure your speed accordingly because of it, so... To be fair to this game, let's give it two separate scores. I'm gonna give the Master System version a 5.5 out of 10, whereas the Genkyo version will get a 3 out of 10. I would like to thank you guys for watching the Sonic Month, but also apologize due to some technical issues. My footage got corrupted, so I had to make everything from square one, which is why I get in this review today. So instead of making months from now on, I'm just gonna call things like, you know, a marathon like Johnny does or some kind of gimmick. I'll figure something out, but I'll definitely make more Sonic videos, but I think I'm sonic out by this point, so I need some break. So I'm definitely gonna make more videos, so if you wanna see what else I'm gonna come up with, you can subscribe right here. My Twitch link is right there if you wanna know where I'm streaming exactly. I also have a Facebook, I have a Twitter, and here are some select Sonic videos right down here, including the original Sonic 2 Genesis review, you can also watch Sonic 1 for the Game Gear, and of course, everyone's favorite, Sonic Genesis for the Game Boy Advance. Indeed, when you think of the greatest games of all time, you know, The Last of Us, Chrono Trigger, Sonic Genesis fits like a glove. Like a glove that was pretty much submerged in sewage. But until then, guys, thank you very much for uh, joining me, and see you next time. Blah.